What's happening, YouTube? I hope you're having a fantastic day. This is my son, Alex. He's going to help me out today. Uh, but first, before we get started, because this is going to be the second half of the uh, Substrate on a Budget Special, Part 2, uh, I have a few shout-outs to some new subscribers. Uh, Vanessa, thank you so much for joining us. I'm really glad you're here. And uh, new subscriber, Pinball, yo, welcome. New subscriber, Joe. Yo, Joe. And then Caleb and Mona. So happy you've joined us. All right, so uh, I'm going to very descriptively describe how to dirt your tank successfully without making any mistakes but you need to follow me from the very beginning all the way to the end this is going to be cut in a section in different steps now it's not difficult to do a dirted tank however if you know nothing it's very easy to make a mistake and mistakes with a dirted tank will mess up everything your whole water chemistry your parameters it all has to be scrapped and and done over and uh, so this will help you if you've never done it before or if you have done it before and you failed which you probably might have I'm going I'll be mentioning why you failed and you didn't even realize it but the mistakes that you can make that wreak havoc on your tank are very easily preventable so follow me from the very beginning to the end and uh, you'll do this right the first time all right so uh, and and, uh, and let me tell you this right fast I did a lot before I got into all of this I watched thousands upon thousands of expert youtuber aquascapers and not one of them mentioned the things that I'm going to tell you to look out for while doing this or you'll ruin the entire project it's almost like they want you to fail because the things that I'm going to mention are extremely important so besides that let's have some fun and shame on you YouTubers for not bringing this up and by the way if you find someone on another video who does happen to mention these point it out to me because I watch thousands of videos and never once did I see it not even through Google I learned this I learned these mistakes through the mistakes making them myself and then keep going alright so I'm gonna cut this short and uh, we're going to I'm gonna show you how to mix the soil with the pebbles and then we'll go from there well, not bye bye, but for right now. bye bye for us. They'll see us in one second. Yeah. All right, we are back and we're going to mix some organic soil with some pebbles. My son's going to help me. Yo, what's happening, man? Stop. All right, so the first mistake that people make whenever they're uh, mixing organic soil and pebbles together is they're trying to use their tap water. You need to use purified water. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to explain why. If you have water that goes through a softener like this, it's got too much salt in it. If it doesn't go through a softener, then it has too many minerals. You don't need all those extra minerals in your soil because your soil already has all that. So use purified water that has absolutely nothing in it because you don't want to overload your plants with too many minerals or minerals you don't want like a bunch of salt. All right, so uh, Alex, do you want to... Uh, Grab a couple handfuls of these pebbles we rinsed off and dump them here into this soil. Now, we're not, I'm not going to do all the dirt in front of you. I'm just going to show you what the consistency should look like when it's wet with the pebbles and the soil. Because you don't want it muddy. You, you, don't, you don't want it muddy or soggy or liquidy. You want it you know, almost like clay. Go ahead and dump in another handful. Yeah, put that in there. Now, the reason we're putting pebbles in there is to help with the gas exchange. If you don't have little rocks in your soil, what can happen is gases can build up in the soil. And they're like uh, anaerobic gases that are can be toxic. And if they get too big, they can pop and explode through your water column. And if a fish swims through that when they pop, it, it can poison them. But there's other steps that we take to prevent that type of stuff from happening as well, besides the pebbles. And we'll get to that later. But first, I just want to show you what the consistency of your dirt should look like. So we're just adding a little bit of water. What kind of dirt is this, man? It's cow manure. Cow? What's cow manure? It's cow. Yeah, we're going to put our hands in some excrement. You ready? No. Are you going to help me? Yeah. All right, let's I, do it. Let's. I don't want to stick my hand in 
Let's touch some doo doo, baby. Ew. Should I help? Yeah. You keep mixing, and I'm going to pour Ew. until we get a Ew. consistency that I'm Ew. looking for. Ew. Yeah. Doesn't it feel good? No, it feels like soil. Does it make you want to play with your own poop? No. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, because that'd be a problem. <laughs> All right, you can stop. Let's try to wrap this up. All right. I just touched your buttload of poop. Yeah, you did. You just, you literally just touched a buttload of poop. Yep, because it came from the butt and it's poop. All right, so here we are. This is perfect. When I squeeze it, no water should come out, but it should be able to hold its shape. So that's what we're looking for. Now I'm going to cut the video again, and when I've filled up the tank with it, I'll show you what to do next before we move on to the sand. Say, uh, thank you for watching me put my hand in poop. Thanks for watching me put my hand in doo-doo. You're welcome. <laughs> welcome back, everybody. All right, so I've got this soil in there, and uh, before we do the sand, I want to show you, I mean... You need to be very particular and take your time with this. Alex, how long have I been dealing with dirt? Like, I mean, what is it right? Three or four hours. Three or four hours, just the dirt, and then getting it in here. And you're going to get it all over the glass to get it off the glass. I used my medical card and just slid it down. Because, yeah, once you start putting some water in there, you're going to have some floaties. But to mash the dirt down, because you want to mash it down as tight as you can. Because, remember, it's not, it's not soggy. It is wet, but it's not soggy. But we're going to talk about how you're going to get it saturated later. Because um, you don't want any standing water um, in your soil at all. I mean, you do want it, you don't, you don't even really want it wet. You want it damp, where it's, you know, a little bit softer than Play-Doh. I use this log here, and in the big areas, I was mashing it down as tight as I can with that. And then, with my hand dandy little spoon. I was getting behind the logs. And he used this, too. Oh, yeah, and I used a candle. Thanks for telling everyone, bro. Now they know my secret. So, yes, you want to mash it down as much as you can. And I'm going to measure this for you. Uh, around two inches is where you want it. Remember, the dirt starts uh, right around here. So, we are looking at, oh, yep, yeah, about three inches. I got three inches, so that means that's about how much sand we're going to do. But first... Here's another mistake that people make. Uh, well, not mashing the dirt down is, is one, and then also making the soil too wet is another one. Because if it's too wet, it's going to start mixing with your sand, and you're not going to have a layer. You know, it's just all going to blend together, and it's like you did nothing. So, yes, you have to make a, uh, there has to be two separate layers. So now what I'm going to do before I use the wet sand, because I do have uh, blasting sand that I've rinsed off, and I have some dry sand. And with the dry sand, I'm going to make a very thin, dry layer of sand, of sand okay. all the way across. And the reason I'm doing that is um, I'm creating a barrier. Because the sand that I'm putting on top is soaking wet. And if I don't put a dry layer of sand here, what's going to happen is the wet sand is going to start to drip down in the cracks and crevices of the soil, which we don't want. You don't want it mixing. So, I'll show you. Yes. You know, however, do not rush, don't rush this whole soil thing. That's the other thing. So when you think you can just do this perfect in, in an hour or so? You're, it, no. You, you know, double check everything. When you're mashing this dirt down, make sure you've mashed it down and there's not huge holes anywhere. So now I've got some of my blasting spent, uh, sand in a spoon and a start off in the corners. And yeah, very thin, not even an inch. I'm not going to have you guys watch me do the whole thing, but a very thin layer, like maybe a centimeter of dry uh, blasting sand. And then once I've done that and I've capped it with the wet sand, we'll get back to you. Alex, do you have anything to say? See you in a minute. Okay, you keep saying see you in a minute. Like For us, it's like two hours. For them, it's like two seconds. All right, I forgive you. All right, the dry sand has been applied. As you can see, it's kind of darker in some spots, but that's just because of where it was more wet. But yes, I need one dry layer going all the way across. And you can see the separation. 
Now we add the actual layer of wet sand, which I've got there. I don't know what just happened, but everything went dark. Wet sand. Let's do it. And I'm ready for this day to be over. Yeah. All right, so I got the wet sand in. And yes, I know this looks like a mess. And it kind of is, but it'll also kind of clean itself up. Now, I got a paper plate in here, and I know this seems really meticulous and particular and time-consuming, and it is, but when you're working with soil and sand, you need to be careful. People who make mistakes and think dirt doesn't work and that it's just a pain in the butt, don't take their time. They try to rush it. So I put half a paper plate in there. See how it's thicker in some places than others? To get this to level out, I'm going to need a even layer of water to flatten all this sand out to make sure it's the same thickness all the way across. Alright, so I dump right when it starts to pool. I will move this over. And blasting sand does sink, so even if a little bit gets kicked up, just give it a second and it will fall back down. Alright, but yeah, I'm going to keep doing that all the way across, one gallon at a time, until I have about... Let me show you. See that? About a centimeter of water, all the way across. Alright, we'll be back when I'm done filling this sucker up with water. And uh, yeah, just so you can look, I did measure it. It's uh, two inches of sand. I'm freaking tired. All right, here's where we're at. So, got a few inches of water in here. Now I'm going to take a break and pick this back up tomorrow because I'm exhausted. Uh, but there is more, uh, lots more. I've been making these as short as possible. But I want you to look at something right now. See how the sand is almost completely saturated and the dirt isn't? I'll explain what to do about that, uh, well, for you guys in a couple seconds. For me tomorrow. I'm freaking done. I'm done today. Alright. Final cut, final clip for the soil capped with sand substrate tank. Now, I'm about to tell you the two number one biggest mistakes that newbies and people who think they're experienced but keep failing make these two mistakes and ruin the entire thing every time and it's the last well one of them's the last thing you do but uh anyway the first biggest mistake that people make when they're trying to do a dirty tank is they try to use any kind of sand other than blasting sand or pool filter sand no other sand will work it will not trap all the nutrients and the organic soil underneath it. It will leach nutrients and everything up into your water column, constantly screwing with your parameters, forcing you to do water changes constantly. Um, so it, those are the only two. And, and trust me, I have tried all the sands. I, I am teaching you from my own mistakes. All right. So any other sand won't work because it's not fine enough. It's too heavy and it'll start sinking in with the soil and leaching it. And no, pebbles don't work either. There are actually some YouTubers out there that are like, oh, put soil and then just put three inches of uh, pebbles on top. No, that won't work either. That leaches your nutrients from your uh, organic soil. And you are trying to keep the organic soil and all its nutrients underneath the sand indefinitely. Now, the second biggest mistake uh, people who try to do a soil substrate capped with sand is they try to plant in it the very same day that they put the soil, capped it with sand. They, you know, oh, I did my due diligence. Yeah, it needs to be blasting sand or pool filter sand, uh, a couple inches of soil and fill it with water and there you go. You cannot plant in it that day. And... I'm going to explain why. You need to wait at least seven days. 
But for people who have done this before, who vaguely got a good idea, uh, you know, they knew what type of stuff to put in here. But then the very same day they tried to put a plant in. And what happened as soon as they put the plant in? A bunch of bubbles exploded to the top. Well, when that happens, it creates a tiny crater that causes the sand to dump in and release uh, soil from that hole. It, it essentially creates a permanent um, hole, if you will, in your substrate. All right, so what you need to do is like, if you have a hang on the back filter, that'll work just fine. I just put one of these fans in here because nothing needs to be filtered. And I just put a fan on and for seven days straight, I let this water run uh, for an entire week until you see in the dirt that there isn't a single pocket of air, that it is truly, fully saturated all the way through with water. Only then can you start planting stuff into it. So yes, I've said it many times already, you need patience if you're going to do a dirted tank, but it is worth it. So that's the last piece of advice I have for you is, yeah, wait a week. Get the water rotating so it can spin the soil around on the top, and eventually all the water will work its way down in there, and seven days later, you can start doing... You're planting. And yes, you do need a heater in there uh, you, uh, to keep the water warm so you can start growing some beneficial bacteria. Uh, I, I just grab a sponge from one of my other uh, filters and just throw that in there and let it float for a week. But that's it. And I really hope you waited to the end and you didn't just get a semi willy nilly idea and do it and then go, oh man, I failed. I'm going to go yell at Dustin. And I'm going to go, well, did you watch the entire 15 minute video? So that's what I've got for you. I am done. All right. I lied. Now this is the final clip. Uh, I forgot to mention, if anything that I said or explained during this whole process of using dirt, pebbles, sand, the whole nine yards, if any, if any of it is unclear or you have questions, please don't hesitate to ask. The only dumb questions are the ones that aren't asked. So don't be scared. It's okay if you still may be confused about something and you want to double check or uh, maybe I didn't mention something that you're concerned about. So drop it in the comments, and uh, I'll explain it thoroughly, okay? I have 14 dirted tanks in here, not just in this basement under the stairs. They're spread out throughout the house as, as well, you know, so, um, and they're all working just fine. Um, so, like I said, talk to me. Uh, besides that, I hope you found everything useful and helpful to you, and I really hope that you consider doing a dirted uh, substrate tank in the, in the future. Okay, I mean, once you've done it and it's working, you'll never go back, I promise. Um, so, with all that said, I appreciate everyone taking the time to watch all of this, and uh, my son as well for helping me out. Actually, I did most of the work, but he did touch, you know, the poop, so I give him props for that. Um, anyway, I hope you all have a fantastic day, and like always, if you're having a bad day, get up and do something about it. Catch you next time, when I start getting some plants in here. Yeah!